Welcome back to another video and in today's episode we will be able to change our buildables to different ones so we will be able to select different buildables if we like and whenever we click the mouse button we will be able to place all of these down. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Before we start anything today, let's go ahead and let's open up our project settings first so that we can create some trace channels because different buildings, uh, when we snap them together, are going to use different, different channels so that we would snap things to their correct position and ignore the unnecessary ones. So let's go ahead, let's create our first channel in the collision settings, in, uh, project settings, collision, new trace channel, and let's call this the foundation trace accept and then the next one we need a one for our floor so floor trace and then we need a wall trace now we're going to come back later and add even more but for today's episode uh these three are going to be good enough and i actually not sure even if we're going to use those in today's episode like fully uh, we're going to set these up in our database but that's going to be pretty much it now uh the next thing is we need some kind of a database and for that we're going to need to create ourselves a blueprint structure because every single one of our buildable entries are is going to consist of multiple parameters so i'm going to call this s buildables let's open this up and let's call the first variable mesh and let's make this into a static mesh because obviously every single one of our buildables need to have a mesh now the next one is going to be the trace channel like we just created multiple trace channels obviously for every single one of our buildables we might be using some different ones so this one was the uh e-trace e-trace type query so that's the one let's go ahead let's create ourselves another variable and i'm going to call this actor this is going to be the actual actor that we are going to spawn within the world and obviously for different buildables we might use different ones like for floors walls all that stuff they're going to be very basic but let's say later in the future you want to have like a crafting bench a furnace or whatever well then these things will come in very very handy so for the type we need to look for an actor but don't click just yet hover over this because we need to select a class reference there we go so that's it for this one now there's two ways how we could go about this you could just create a variable inside of your uh, build component and then store all, all that information inside of that variable or another option is to create ourselves a data table and then grab info from over there i think the data table is a little bit better so let's go to the miscellaneous and let's create ourselves a data table and we need to now select a structure on which we are basing this from and we're going to base this on our S buildables. Now, for some reason, there's always two whenever we create one. Not quite sure exactly why. Both of them should be exactly the same ones. As you can see, the route to them is exactly the same. Okay, this is going to be my buildables DB. Let's open this up. And now over here, we can add all of our buildables that we want to add. So to do so, let's click on this add symbol right here. First one has a row name we can give this we we can skip this like this isn't too necessary at this point maybe later on in the future it will be but just to make it a little bit nicer uh, we could give these some names as well so first foundation foundation there we go so let's select the first entry let's give it a mesh so i need the foundation mesh this one right here the trace channel for this is going to be the foundation trace and right now we don't have any actors. We're gonna set those up in a second. Let's add a couple of more entries. So we're gonna have a floor in this video. So we can look for a floor, floor slash uh, four underscore ceiling, which is gonna use the floor trace. Let's add another one. And this is going to be our wall. And this needs to have a wall, uh, this one, trace. For some reason there's two door traces as well. I think that's a glitch. I need to restart my engine. It, it's going to be fine. Then it, it, those two don't just ignore those. Now we're good with this. We have this set up. So now the next thing is we need the actual actors that we are going to place in the world, which will basically spawn for us. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create ourselves a folder and I'm going to call this build building. And I'm going, to, I'm going to bring all of these things in there. So I'm going to move those over there. There we go. 
And inside of this one, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call this buildables. And inside of here, let's create ourselves a new blueprint class. Mine is going to be a static mesh actor type, but obviously it can be any type you like. I'm going to use the static mesh ones. Okay. And this is going to be the, I'm going to uh, prefix these build, and this is going to be build foundation. Let's open this up. And for the static mesh, I'm going to look for my foundation mesh. There we go. Now, one thing that's really important with the assets that uh, you need them to be when their pivot points are right in the center of, of them, because that's going to make the building a lot easier. As you can see, this one is right in the middle. So that's going to make our life a lot easier. This one also right in the middle at the bottom. So it's bottom middle always. So that's how our system is going to work properly. Otherwise, if some pivot points are off, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to make these work. So uh, make sure your buildables are set up properly with the uh, middle bottom pivot points. There we go. So we have this one. Everything's all right. We have the default collision. They should be blocking everything and everything should be just fine. It should be just a regular basically like a regular uh, mesh at this point for now that's good enough let's duplicate this and let's call this build floor and another one is going to be the build wall so again i'm going to open those up and i'm going to change those to be the wall build wall and we also need the build floor which is the floor underscore ceiling there we go so those actors are all set up. So now in our database, we can specify those. So for the foundation, we can look for our build foundation. For the next one, we can look for our build floor. And the last one is going to be our build wall. There we go. So we have our three of our buildables. Now we got to bring this database inside of our component so that we can access this easily so that we don't have to always uh, get the info from it. I think it's going to be better if we just store it in a variable so it's easier for us to access it without getting all the info because we can't really manipulate any of these data. It's just there and that's it. And to make life a little bit easier, in my build component, what I'm going to do is so over here on a begin play, what I'm going to do is just simply get data table row names. So I'm going to get all of them at the same time. Whenever we start the game, it's going to go through the whole database. And for this, we're going to do a loop for each. We're going to go through every single one of these. And what we're going to do over here is just get data table row. Like so, we're going to connect the name into the array element. So it's going to, going to grab us all the entries in the database. It's going to go through all of them. And then we select the database, provide the row name, and it's going to output us the information that it has. So what we're going to do is create ourselves a variable called buildables. And this needs to be our S buildables structure type. And this needs to be an array. Then we can compile and save that, bring that in, get the variable and add some info to that. So let's connect this to the row found and plug this into the outro. There we go. So now it's going to look for all the buildables in the database and going to store those inside of a variable, which is then really easy because then we can export this and do all kinds of things outside of the Unreal Engine with it. Uh, and it's a little bit easier to keep up with the information rather than just storing all of them over here. But that's also an option. You can also store them just directly here in the variable manually by adding these entries. But I'm not going to do that for this system. So the next thing that we need is a few more adjustments for if one of our functions, existing one and some more new ones. So first in the spawn build ghost, we need to actually provide a specific mesh over here. So what I'm going to do is grab our buildables database. I'm going to get a copy to it from it. And for the ID, I'm going to use the build ID like so. And then I can split this and now I have all the info that I need. So I'm going to grab the mesh from that and plug that in. And now it's going to automatically set us the mesh based on the uh, on which buildable we have selected. Now, the next one is we need to go into our build cycle and we have some different trace channels for different buildables. So what I'm going to do is again, get our buildables. We're going to get a copy 
we're going to use our build ID as the index. And then we can split that. And again, depending on what we are building, it's going to provide us a different trace channel, which we can then plug in over here. So now our trace channels are going to change as well. So that's nice. Now we're going to need a couple of more functions. Both of them are going to be very, very simple. So let's create the first one and let's call this change mesh. Now over here, what we want to do is we want to grab our build ghost component. Let's get that. And we want to set a static mesh to it so that we can change this during the gameplay. Uh, well, actually more so during when we have the build mode enabled. So we just run this one and it's going to change the, the mesh for this specific object. Now for the mesh, again, the thing that we just did already, let's get a copy from our buildables. Let's provide the index, split this and provide the mesh. As simple as that. Now the next function, new function, let's call this spawn actor, or we can call this spawn build. So here, all we want to do is spawn actor from class. And for the build transform, we want to provide our build transform for the spawn transform. And then again, we want to get our buildables, get a copy using again, our build ID as the index. Then we can split this. And now it will give us the actor class that we need to spawn if we want to spawn this specific buildable. There we go. So that's pretty simple. Two very basic functions, but they are going to go a long, long way for us. Now, the next two, uh, two things that we are going to add are going to live inside of our third person character because he's the one who has all the controls and everything. So we're going to store a little bit of information over here, but it's not going to be a lot. There's just going to be a couple of small controls and that's it. And those are going to be very easy to bring to any other character later on. So the first one is let's go ahead and let's make sure that we can change the buildable whenever our build mode is already enabled. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to look for the mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down keys. Obviously you can use any event you like. So we have the up and down ones. There we go. And over here, uh, what we are going to do is first, we're going to grab our build component. And from this build component, we're going to get our buildables. So let's get our buildables so that we know basically how many of these we actually have. And to find that out, we can get the length. So no get, just look for length and it's going to return you the length of this array. So it's going to tell us how many uh, entries there actually are. So the next one is from the length, we're going to do a minus one because length is going to begin with one when we have one, but the array and the indexes will begin with zero always. So what we are going to do then is let's move this down a little bit. Let's go ahead and from our build component, let's also get the build ID so that we know which one we have at this point. Here we go. And then what we want to do is grab our build component once more. So it's so it's, the, it's basically just for, so the wiring is a little bit nicer and we want to set our build ID. And we're going to want to set it twice. We're going to want to set it on mouse wheel up and on mouse wheel down. So on pressed, we're going to connect both of these and we're going to connect the same target for both of them. This one right here. Now we actually need to provide the value. And what I'm going to do is, so for the top one, I'm going to grab the build ID and I'm going to do a plus one. And then I want to clamp that value, clamp the integer so it doesn't go beyond its limit so that it always would stay within the length of the array. And for that, we need to plug in this length minus one into the maximum value. And this way it is never going to go above that limit. And then this can set it. Now for the bottom one, we're going to do the same, except for we're going to do build ID minus one. And again, we're going to clamp it. So we're going to set the value. We're going to clamp the maximum value to this one right here. And then this is our new index. Here we go. So that's looking pretty nice. Let's move this up just a little bit. And these are all the controls for now. Now, once we change the ID, uh, we want to do the la one last thing. We want to change the mesh because we changed the ID. So we want to go to a different ID, uh, different mesh. So from the build component, we can run our change mesh function and plug both of the executions like so.
Here we go. So the mouse wheel and changing index is finished. Now the next one is actually placing the actual actor down. So for that, I'm going to use the mouse left key. So left mouse button. And over here, we're going to do first, we're going to do an if branch check because, well, we got to make sure for a couple of conditions. Obviously, you're going to have some attacking maybe on the mouse left or whatever. Uh, so first, we got to make sure that some of the conditions do match up and that we actually have the build mode enabled. So for that, again, let's grab our build component. And from this guy, let's get his build mode on. And also, we got to make sure that can build. So both of these conditions need to be true. So for from both of these, we're going to do a and. We're going to connect those in a and to make sure that both of these are true. And then plug that into our branch condition. Now, if that is true, then we can grab our build component once more. And we can then just simply spawn build. Plug that in. And there we go. Now it should be working just fine. So let's give it a shot. Let's hit play. Let's press B. We have our buildable. If we use our mouse wheel, there we go. We are changing our buildable into a different one. Now, if we click, it is placing it down. We can place all the buildables that we want, as many as we want. We have the walls as well available to us. We have a lot of these available now. Obviously, as much as you will set these up in the database, that's how many you will have. For now, I'm going to have only three. But later on, obviously, we're going to add all kinds of bunch of other ones. So we're going to have all kinds of walls, doors, all that stuff. And also these ones are going to be snapping together next to one another because right now they are just free floating and whatever they hit something. Well, that's where you can place those. So that's going to be it for <laughs> that's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe because there's a lot more to come. We're going to improve this quite quite a bit. And I think this is going to be really, really cool. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, and I see you in the next one.